Welcome. Welcome to the, the live comedy in your living room, everybody. The the one show where you don't have to wear a mask. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's such a weird time. Like we, nobody can smell anything. Not just people who are sick. Nobody can smell. <laughs> I stopped wearing cologne like a year ago now. <laughs> now I have Sherelle number two, just a little dab. And... <laughs> yeah, at least the mask does something. So I, I'm okay sacrificing smell, but sometimes you'll go out and it's just the things that they're doing to make us feel safe. It's like performance art. I went to a restaurant and they had plastic part dividers between all the tables. And I'm like, and what do these do here? Because it prevents the air from flowing back and forth. I'm like, oh, really? Well, then you won't mind if I smoke. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, everybody. A guy, a guy at the next table, he was wearing uh, denim. Like, he had all denim, and he had a cowboy hat, and he had the belt buckle. And then for a mask, he had the American flag. And I'm like, yeah, man, you don't need the flag. We, we get it. We got it. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Takes all kinds, though. I, I love them all. You know, I met a guy on a ship. His name was Zephyr. <laughs> like, Zephyr. Like, what does that mean? He goes, it means my parents were hippies. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Zephyr. Oh, uh, Mike Thompson, our friend in Westlake Village, says Kayo is dialing in from Japan. A little love all the way out to wow. Japan. Kayo Matsumoto, she's the sweetest person in the world. So is Mike. Are you on mic right now, Kayo? Yes, we are. How, what, time is, what time is it in Tokyo? It's a little bit after noon on Christmas Eve. It's 24th already here. Oh. Uh -huh. 17 hour the, ahead. Oh, so she's in the future. <laughs> What's the lottery I, I left my husband in the, we, maybe you could tell us what the stocks are going to do we'll bet it real quick before we go to bed i'll call you <laughs> thanks for thanks for joining us kayo um kayo is the head of cancer support community in westlake village it's a it's uh such a great uh i've been working with them for like 10 years but mm -hmm. everything they do is free to people who are going through cancer so they don't have to do it alone and um you know support groups and my little part of the whole thing is to bring in the comedy so yep. shout out to kayo and all the good work she deserves to go back to Yay! japan yeah Thank you, Jason. Good. yeah so comedy well, nights are the most popular event oh. oh well that's that's really good to hear it's, it's a very it's the least we could do so uh, I've been on ships these last few weeks, and I'm really glad to be home. I took a bath tonight. Oh, <laughs> I put some essential oils in there, a little fuegarita. <laughs> yeah, my um, and then just hanging out with Patty. I got out of the bath. It's raining, and it's not like uh, Caribbean rain that I've been in with the like the sweaty rain. This is like beautiful, refreshing. Oh, she's Rick. Christmas rain Sorry, with there, fireplaces. So, uh, and then I got to hang out with Patty downstairs. I'm just uh, really happy. Yeah, I um, I was on the ships for three weeks and it got to the point where I, I had to go in. I understand, but it's not getting me over here. It gets supplies. <laughs> so some of us are still learning Zoom, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> I had to go into San Juan for supplies and all they had in the city was a super max. And I'm like, well, let's not get carried away. You have three <laughs> kinds of cereal. That's yeah. Back home, we call this a mini mart. <laughs> Supermax. We have it so good here. Trader Joe's, Walmart, Target. Oh, I have a service that delivers free rubber bands every Thursday. I call, it, I call it the Acorn Newspaper. <laughs> that's true. Good. Yeah. The acorn, you know, that's that's a newspaper with some self-esteem issues. Because if they had more self-esteem, they'd call themselves the oak. <laughs> <laughs> we might be something big someday. Maybe if you like us, you like us. I don't know. <laughs> Two days till Christmas. It's here. It's just uh, every year, it's just faster and faster. And I got to figure out what to get everybody all over again. A lot of participation trophies. 
<laughs> yeah. No, you know, maybe it's because my dad's not good at it either. My dad got me uh, one year. He got me a care package and he goes, it's just little things, you know, little things. He got me sunblock, uh, almond broca. It was just one. Just the just one. <laughs> uh, he got me a big lighter for the barbecue out back. It, it was like he did the best he could without losing his place in line at Target. I paid to have this to work and it's not working. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Tech help. <laughs> I got it. All right. So David and Barbara, when you get it all figured out, we could hear you. Is this thing working? I understand. <laughs> <laughs> but we're happy to have you, David, and uh, I think it was Barb. So um, thanks for coming. Yeah, it's been good. It's um. You know, I, I'm thinking about these presents that we give everybody and I always want it to be good for people. But I just I have this like uh, neurosis. I got my my nephew a book one year and he's looking at it like, where do you plug it in? What is this thing? <laughs> is, is this the manual? <laughs> and like, no, man, it's a book. You read it at, at bedtime. And he's like, oh, he looks at me like, oh, that's adorable. No, see. <laughs> My books are read to me by Morgan Freeman, professionally. <laughs> On Netflix. On uh, Netflix, well, on audible.com. Yeah. The new generation, man. 60 Minutes was talking about um, how kids are addicted to video games now. And um, you can't get them to sit down for homework, but they'll spend all night long shooting people and killing stuff. So, <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. So what I think we should do is like incorporate the schoolwork into the game, you know, like rip his heart out to solve for X. Blood math. Times are changing. You know, they just changed the Staples Center. It's now going to oh, wow. be Crypto.com Arena. Really? Just, yeah, it just rolls right off the tongue, doesn't it? The <laughs> crypto.com arena. You go, how much are tickets? They're like, we don't know. It changes every hour. <laughs> <laughs> you, you just connect your e-wallet to the blockchain, and then Elon Musk talks <laughs> to the aliens, and then I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Bezos took a bunch of civilians to outer space. <laughs> I don't know. And one of them was a teenager. That's a million dollar ticket. And there was a teenager on this damn flight to outer space. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a Willy Wonka situation there. I want my own rocket and I want it now. Take her to space and drop her. <laughs> that was a long way to go for that one, Mom, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know how they spin, they send like Earth relics into outer space in case we make contact, they have like some reference. They just sent like a whole bunch of commercials, TV commercials out into outer okay, space. So, yeah. So uh, somewhere in the distance, there's a you know group of creatures that has never seen a white man. <laughs> we had a good run guys we're not on tv commercials anymore though <laughs> so uh, how about this i had a couple of uh i had a couple of songs i would like to share with you fine people on this special christmas eve ish show uh but why don't we do one that uh i've been working on and by the way everybody uh over these shows i can't how many have we done tony we've probably done 50 now it's a lot. We've done a lot. Please. And I, I try to bring you guys new ideas every time. Uh, yeah. Some of them don't work, you know, like if I try to do a joke about white guys on TV commercials. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys, over those shows, you've helped me figure out, you know, what I what to spend my time on and what to weed. And um, so uh, same thing goes with music. When I run these things up the pole, you know, you see who salutes. Here's one that I started with you guys, and I, I think I've developed it since then. 
you know, you know there's no such thing as Kokomo. It's uh, Brian Wilson. To- yeah, he totally made it up. <laughs> there's no Kokomo in the Car- like the Florida Keys. There's Kokomo, Indiana. Yeah. And I think we should hold them to that. <laughs> uh, no mountains and no beach. A Kmart if you're lucky. <laughs> it's so cold you almost don't want to make your parole. <laughs> Way down in Coca, Pittsburgh and Dayton. Come on, don't be hating. South Bend and Carmel. Can't you hear the cowbells? Warsaw and Munster. Kind of like a dumpster down in Coca. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> I've been listening to Sirius XM, and I always go back as far as I can until I can't handle it anymore. I can't do anything before the 50s. I don't know how they lived. I, just, I would rather hey. have silence. Hey. <laughs> it's me. It's all subjective, right? You know, I, I even tried Billie Holiday, and, you know, I just couldn't do it. But uh, the 50s is where rock and roll was born, and it got exciting, and they had this new sound and a new vibe. But the... Uh, the, the messaging wasn't there yet. I'm not sure what they were trying to get across. Shimmy, shimmy, cocoa bop. Shimmy, shimmy, bop. Goo, 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 ga, ga, ga. Goo, 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 ga. Nothing to say. Weema, waka, weema, waka, weema, waka. Uber the bomb and the bomb the bomb. Uber the ram and the ram a lam a ding dong. Mama da mom, mama da mom, a bang a dang day. What are we trying to say? <laughs> so um, the 2000s, I've been listening to that on Sirius XM, and the 2000s were just about the bass and the booty. That's that's what I'm getting from it. It, it wasn't exactly, you know, Bob Dylan level writing going on. <laughs> what you gonna do with all that junk? <laughs> All that junk in your trunk. I'm gonna get you drunk. Love drunk on my humps. My humps, my humps, my humps, my humps, my humps. <laughs> yeah, man, yeah. <laughs> to, get that, to get that bit, you have to know Bob Dylan and the Black Eyed Peas. <laughs> This next joke is going to require a protractor, so if you'd all pull out your protractors, good. <laughs> For Patty's birthday, I got, uh, we, did, we did the mariachi one year, and um, not a time for Groupon. <laughs> <laughs> they, they spent their first hour at the bar, and then, yeah, then three of the four made it, actually made it to the stage. <laughs> The only the only words in the whole thing were I don't even know what that is, man. I think some dude just stepped on a Lego. Canta y no llores, sing and don't cry. Who put this damn Lego in everyone's way? I think I'll have more tequila. Okay. Well, those are going to need some work, but that's why we have my little board up set. We'll, we'll work it out. Okay, guys, that's my time as your host. My name is Jason Love, and thank you for coming. Thank you, everybody. So um, we have a great lineup tonight. And um, your first comedian, your second comedian after myself, is uh, very funny. I've worked with her a bunch of times. She plays all the clubs and colleges. She's done all of my gigs. Put your hands together for the very funny Erin Tracy. You're you're muted, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. We're just gonna do it without those things. Oh my there gosh, go. Jason! I feel like uh, you and I have the same stylist tonight uh, with the black <laughs> mock turtle neck. I feel like uh, nothing says comedy more than a black mock turtle.
Bill Nack, personally. <laughs> uh, my favorite thing. I'm so excited to be here with you all. I wanted to do like a special Christmas Zoom background. Um, so I tried it and uh, this is what it looks like. I just <laughs> uh, Christmas uh, Zoom show, actually. It turns me into those. <laughs> uh, here I am. Um, um, definitely not a reflection of my dread at all about the holidays and getting all my Christmas shopping done. Anybody else? Anybody else? How you feel? <laughs> Not just me. Uh, but I feel like this past couple of years, I've just been living through screens, right? Like, I've been a lot of Zoom dance classes, is what I'm saying. I know, only slightly sadder than Zoom comedy shows, it turns out. <laughs> The Zoom dance classes, because my downstairs neighbors, they're very supportive. Anytime I take one, they put a ring on my ceiling to cheer me on. And like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> going, you know, like, oh, it's nice. Uh, I also, um, I've been on some Zoom dates. Better than that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, that delayed support was the right response. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I was Zoom dating this guy. He would name the Zoom after a restaurant every time. Oh. I, know, I know. I wish I wrote this. I wish this wasn't my real life. So I have been, <laughs> <laughs> I have been to Zoomianos. <laughs> <laughs> I have been to the Zoom Cake Factory. <laughs> and uh, nothing makes me feel like I'm gonna die alone more than going on a third date to Zoom Lobster. <laughs> <laughs> also, like the sky's the limit. Why is why are you picking just aggressively mediocre places to take me to? Right. Like, <laughs> I mean, all those places are fine in real life, but you're telling me, like, in your wildest imagination, you're still poor? <laughs> nice. I, uh, I don't know. I, I've also, you know, this time is so interesting because I finally reached the age where when I am in the wild, people either call me ma'am or young lady. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. There are some knowing laughs out there. I hate both those things. But what I like about it is I now know I've entered a phase in my life I like to call young manhood. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, finding love right now is hard because I'm really looking for someone who is old enough to remember MapQuest. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> but but not old enough to remember the assassination of JFK. You know what I mean? Like that is, <laughs> I feel like there's nobody in the middle right now. I don't know where they all are. I'm the only one. Am I the only one that fits that? <laughs> I don't know. My friend was like, that's not your problem, Aaron. Your problem is that you like gym guys because you like muscles. I, yeah, right. Of course. Yeah, you know what I mean. Of course, I like muscles, but that's not why I like gym guys. I like gym guys because I like being left alone for at least two hours every day. That works. <laughs> yeah. I know. I also I've made the mistake of dating fellow stand-up comedians. Yeah, but I like to learn from my mistakes. And what I learned is if they have some material about being bad in bed. You should believe them. You need Zoom. They're joking about a lot of things, but not about that. It turns out I, um, you know, I, I was, I was married. Once. I mean, look at me. I'm a catch, right? Yes. <laughs> and release. It turns out. So here I am. We are together. Here we are. It's good. Uh, I have I have been single for a long time and uh I feel like I'm finally ready though to find love again so I was like I'm gonna get very specific this time right I was like I've never done this before but I'm gonna be one of those people that makes a list right I'm gonna believe in the secret so I was like okay he's got to have his own place I always move in way too fast like own place and then I with that space I want to be able to trust him and know where he is and what he's up to right and then I got crazy. I was like, 
I want snail mail, like romantic letters. Like I want a guy who will buy me a stamp, you know, like <laughs> who even does that anymore. I mean, a stamp is forever. We all know that. And that's what I want. <laughs> and then I just, I look back over my list and I was like, oh no, I want a prison boyfriend. <laughs> I mean, he's definitely working out for two hours a day and he knows what it's like to be committed. So, you know, I'm just. <laughs> 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 I'm from Florida. I am. Yes, I am. You guessed it, didn't you? I'm from Florida. I'm, uh, I'm in Florida right now. Both of my parents uh, worked in public school, they were teachers. So we did have a lot of money growing up. Oh, some teachers out there. Yeah, we were yeah. white trash, but we were definitely white trash adjacent, you know, like, that. <laughs> <laughs> like we maybe weren't that, but we were definitely Caucasian compost. Like that was the layer. <laughs> you know, like growing up, you want a dad that has a cool job, like an engineer or pilot or a spy, but, but now my dad, writes test questions for standardized tests. <laughs> I know that's like getting to the end of the movie and realizing your dad was the villain all along. <laughs> oh, wow. I am, I'm in Florida right now and I have just been enjoying, I haven't seen my whole family together in the past two years. And I have to show you, I went, I'm in my sister's house. I'm in my mom's room in my sister's house right now. I took my dog for a walk earlier today and you know how you know you're in Florida for sure? Uh, this, this is how you know. This is a sign. <laughs> That's a sign I saw while I was walking my dog today here in Florida. Uh, yeah. You know how else you know is you also happen to see yourself advertising hearing aids in one of the strip malls. <laughs> That's me. That's me. I'm advertising. I, I'm your doctor. I'm your doctor for scribing your hearing aids. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, I offered, I went in and I offered to sign all the hearing aids in there. <laughs> They said no, but I think they just were ready for me. You know, I think that's, that's fine. I, uh, it's, it's so nice to be around. Yeah. My day job as a doctor. I feel like my parents are more proud of that picture of me as a doctor than anything else I've ever done. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> this is our dream, but only in this picture on the side of the bell tone. Uh, <laughs> I mean, everybody in my family is uh, very small and very anxious and very competitive, right? So it's like, I belong to a family of like Olympic gymnasts with um, all of the intensity, but none of the talent, you know, like we're just <laughs> nervous all the time. Just, ah, uh, it's great. But, uh, but you know, it's, it's so nice to be I have a, a younger nephew, uh, Dalton, and it, it, you know, I don't have any kids, but I, I so respect parents. I, I'm sure there are parents out there. And uh, the other night I was here and I woke up and he was like scream crying at my bedroom door. I was like, oh no, he's crying about the mole man, which is just the boogeyman for those of you from less creative families, it turns out. And so <laughs> I like pick him up and I get him into bed. And uh, right before he falls asleep, I go, Dalton, because of course his name is Dalton. Look at me. Okay, relax. Uh, <laughs> Dalton, where did you see the mole man? And that that little jerk looks me right in the eyes, and he goes, "In your closet." <laughs> <laughs> and then he falls asleep. Right? Like I. I was saying is, I thought my sister was like raising the future of America, not M. Night Shyamalan, right? <laughs> Aaron Tracy, thank you so much, everybody. Yay! Nicely done. Aaron Tracy, everybody. Let her hear it. That was great. Super funny, Aaron. Great job. So, Carmen, who is Tony's wife and the inventor of Fuegarita, she says you're great. Patty Jenkins still uses MapQuest. <laughs> and uh, Christine Elowitz says that MAM should only be used if you're in the military. 
here is our next show, everybody. It's January 15th. Oh, and um, thank you all for coming out today because we broke that magic 100 mark, which means, you know, that's, that means we're in the black and we can keep doing it. And it's, and it's during the holidays. We had a lot of attrition, but Joey and Michelle are here. So what's up? Hello. Guys. What's up? Yeah. And um, speaking of um, cruise ship, uh, people, I have had no less than 20 different people come up on ships that I only had known through the virtual show. So I'm hoping you, Joey and Michelle, will be two of them at some point. We've got okay. several of them scheduled. Yeah. So we'll overlap. Yeah, I'm, I'm rocking the, uh, I think Aaron and I are doing the beatnik comedy show tonight. <laughs> rocking our little, yeah, man. You don't have to laugh, just snap if you like a joke. <laughs> I think after the next comic, though, I'm going to come up with a tank top because Patty downstairs has the heat on really, really high. <laughs> <laughs> we we run at different temperatures, man. Like, uh, and Alexa's caught in the middle of it. <laughs> like, uh, Alexa, turn it back to 72. And Patty's like, don't you do that, Alexa. <laughs> Looking for marriage counselors in your area. <laughs> Okay, everybody, we are ready for our next comedian, and uh, I really like this guy. I got to meet him in Oakland, where he runs the Oakland Comedy Club. He, you know, he's just a, a good dude and a funny dude. Put your hands together for Samson Kolitkar. <laughs> where are we? Where are we, Samson? Is your video on? Right here. There he is. Sorry. There he is. Gotcha. All right. Thank you, Jason. Thank Get off you, there. Everybody. Get off there. I don't want you on there. Yeah. <laughs> uh -oh. Jason, I think somebody doesn't want him on here. I'm still on here. All right. I guess I'll do a show then. Okay. <laughs> Oh, that almost, that almost reminded me of the live shows we used to do before. Because you know the thing that I miss? Why, I, I've been doing Zoom shows. Like a lot of us have been doing Zoom shows. And I miss mm -hmm. the live shows. Because at the end of live shows, I don't know what it is about me. But people would like to come up to me and talk to me and give me feedback. Hey. Tell me things like, uh, go back to where you come from. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh. yeah, a lot of my friends are like, dude, that is so racist. I'm like, yes, but at least they are being a caring, considerate racist. <laughs> <laughs> I will explain. I will explain. I know that I look ambiguous. Right? So when they see me, they're not sure where I'm from. So they're like, hey, man, I don't like you. And I want you to go back. But I don't want you to go back to the wrong country and get into trouble. <laughs> <laughs> go where you're from. Just go back to where you come from. Be safe in your own country. That's a caring, considerate racist. I like this guy. I don't know what to. <laughs> hey, look, I am. I am originally from India, and I don't know if you know this, but India is the original melting pot of the world, and so this. Go back to where you come from is a very American phrase for me because when I grew up in India, you can argue, disagree, debate with anybody on anything. Nobody ever tells you to go back to where you come from. Yeah. <laughs> they tell you to go to Pakistan. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I am an Indian guy living in the Silicon Valley, uh, which means uh, my day job. I am a Kama Sutra instructor. Thank you, everybody. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> and I got one woo on that. Thank you. No, I, I work in tech because it's the law. <laughs> the, the only reason I'm on this show is Jason wanted some tech support in case something went wrong with Zoom. <laughs> 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 so welcome to the diversity portion of the show. I am it. <laughs> I think that's why Jason had a hard time finding me. He's like, oh, I did forget I had booked a non-white guy. All right, where is he? 
<laughs> that's a fun way to get rebooked, right? Like one of the host. <laughs> uh, especially when his mom is on the show. It's like, yeah, that's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And this is great. I'm so glad to be here. Thanks for having me. A year ago, around this time, I had just recovered from COVID. And oh. I remember, yeah, I remember getting COVID. People say that you, when you get COVID, it makes you very weak. Mm-hmm. Not me. I actually felt very strong and powerful. Yeah. Yeah. The minute I found out I have COVID, I immediately started remembering all those people that I had been avoiding for years. <laughs> okay, hey, time to go say hi to a few of them. <laughs> right, clean up some clean up some shit from this planet, open up some parking spaces for the rest of you. <laughs> yeah, my contribution to my community. Yes. <laughs> so in case you haven't gotten COVID yet, uh go get some. It's easy it's free and then you can do do something worthwhile for your community (laughs) one for the team you get one for the team exactly thank you (laughs) i also realized how badly the economy was affected by covid last year uh because earlier this year back in march i took a flight from san francisco to mumbai and i flew on united airlines And COVID has hit the economy so bad that United was treating its passengers with dignity. (laughs) 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 Also, if I think about the entire 18 months of lockdown that we have been in, to me, it comes down to three things. People constantly telling me where to go, what to do, what to wear. That's it. The whole pandemic. Constantly. People just telling me, right? Don't go outside. Stay inside. Wear a mask. Wear some gloves. Avoid crowded places. Don't sneeze in people's faces. Constantly. Where to go, what to do, what to wear. I have been told where to go, what to do, what to wear so many times throughout this pandemic. I now feel like a woman. (laughs) you like that joke some of you sorry it was close to home i (laughs) thank you for one clap there on mute i Also, I've been thinking about this a lot, and I realized that, oh, am I at time, Jason? Okay. It's, uh, it's two. Totally fine, because I was about to jump into a bit that's, like, long, so I'll keep it short, <laughs> all right? Because, <laughs> you know, I don't want to run late. My community is infamous for running late, so. <laughs> I used to watch a lot of horror movies growing up. And what I found fascinating was in the Hollywood horror movies, the tool to fight the ghost is a cross, right? You pull out a cross and the ghost is like, oh no, I can't cross that cross. <clears throat> but then I also watched a lot of Bollywood movies growing up. And in the Bollywood horror movies, the tool to fight the ghost is the Hindu symbols. It's all like the Om and the Trishul and the ghost is like, oh no, can't cross those. Which made me wonder two things. One, religion will haunt you even after you die. <laughs> <laughs> Not the best joke for a Christmas show, but I'm sticking with my gun. <laughs> <laughs> and two, why are all the ghosts in the movies so religious? <laughs> <laughs> you die, you're free. Why do you continue to suffer? <laughs> Oh, and now I got a dog barking at me. (laughs) Which, by the way, also made me wonder if all the ghosts in the movies are so religious, are there any atheist ghosts? (laughs) Yeah, and if there are, how do you scare them? What do you show them? I would probably go like, hey, here's a business card of a psychiatrist. Like, oh, no. no, no, no." 
<laughs> All right. Thank you guys for having me on the show, Jason. Thank you very much. Uh, there has been no technical difficulties. All right, Samson, call it car, everybody. Let them hear it. Hey. Great job, man. Are you, so, you are you in Oakland right now, Samson? I live twenty miles south of Oakland, so in the area, yes. Oh, okay. You don't want to specify what though. What's your I address, in, Samson? I, I, I live in Hayward. <laughs> Where do you live? Hayward Hills. Hayward Hills. All right. I don't even know where that is. I've been up there a thousand times. Or you're, you're hidden away somewhere. That must be where the ritzy people live. I'm more of the other side of the tracks kind of guy. <laughs> oh, by the way, everybody, here is our, uh, if you want to tip the comics, that's how you could do it. Um, and thank you for those of you who have supported the show. We really do appreciate it. It's enough that you're here. That really makes me very happy. But um, this also just allows like the reputation to go out to the comedians and all of that good stuff. Um, and the next one is January 15th, a Saturday. I have a Saturday open. How about that? Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we just squeezed it in there. And uh, we have two more comedians, and you guys are going to really love them. Your next comedian, I have not gotten to work with him since the before times, but uh, before that, we worked plenty. He has had uh, his own half hour Comedy Central Presents special, which used to be the holy grail like uh, Netflix is now. But uh, super funny guy. Put your hands together for Michael Gelbart. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Hello, comedy lovers. Can everyone hear me? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I did everything right. I put up a curtain. Did you see I put up a curtain? <laughs> the show. It's a Christmas paper. And if you look, the curtain is just long enough to make it in the time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to stay in these parameters for the whole <laughs> Well, Merry Christmas to all of you. The weirdest thing ever. I made a list of jokes to do, and I don't know if you can see it. Ramalama Ding Dong is on the list. <laughs> on. Ever of two people having a Ramalama Ding Dong joke. No. <laughs> anyway, uh, so it's the holidays. Yeah, I, I scratched my ear. I keep forgetting that you can see everything I do. Uh, and this is how dressed I am, by the way. It's pajama bottoms from below here. <laughs> um, I, uh, I, I hope you've all gotten, oh, first I'm going to open, I guess I sort of opened already, but I'm going to open, I only do this joke around Christmas, once a year people get to hear it, you're the only audience that's going to get to hear this joke. You remember when you were kids, uh, you were listening to that song, the chipmunk song, right? The uh, uh, Christmas, Christmas time, it's, it's the chipmunks, right? And there would always be that guy, Dave, David Seville, and in every uh, chipmunk song dave would go alvin you're ruining the song alvin what are you doing alvin <laughs> <laughs> if he's so upset about it how come that's the version that ends up getting released <laughs> every single he must have talked to the record label going I've recorded like 20 songs for you and you keep releasing the version where I'm yelling at Alvin. <laughs> going to kill him. I'm going to get canceled for this. <laughs> there you go. That's the one, the joke, my only Christmas joke. <laughs> Good night, everyone. No, I can't end up. <laughs> um, drinking green tea, by the way, in case you're wondering what's in here. Um, you, know, you probably got your holiday shopping done and you went to the, the mall and I find malls fascinating. Every mall in America has a Wetzel's pretzels and an Auntie Annie's pretzels. That is the least compelling rivalry in America. <laughs> <laughs> to hear the conversation. How do we find out what the Wetzel's people are up to? Um, I could take the escalator. No, that's what they expect. <laughs> and of course, you've been to seize candies during the holidays. I always go in. I don't know if you all know this. You probably of the hundred and three of you uh, here. Uh, seize candies gives you. If you, all you have to do is ask, and they'll give you a free chocolate, right? But I don't like to do it that way. I like to pretend I. 
might buy something. You know, I feel kind of guilty. <laughs> no, I've never bought anything at Seas Candies in my life, but I always <laughs> feel like it's my first time ever sampling their products. So I'm like, what are these again? Uh, Chocolates, you say? Chocolates? <laughs> <laughs> Chocolates for a long time. Oh, chocolates. Okay. <laughs> can I? Can I? Can I have another one? Oh yeah. This is good too. Oh yeah. Oh, one more. You know, I'm I'm trying to decide if I want to buy. Oh yeah, this is good. Can I have a maybe a box to put my samples in? <laughs> That's a good one. ribbon on the samples. <laughs> It's going yeah. pretty well, by the way. I'm happy to have done this. I, I was deeply concerned, and now I'm happy. I'm having trouble with my eyes open, but that looks terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if any of you are in love. Some of you are in love. Joey and Michelle look like they like each other. There. Yes. Hi. <laughs> um, if you want to know what makes a relationship go the distance, I'm talking the rest of your life. Ask your oldest relatives that have been together the longest right because everyone's got like a really really old relative with a beautiful story like your grandfather told me <laughs> on our first date that i was the girl that he was gonna marry try saying that on a first date now and see how that goes <laughs> her friends right in front of you oh my god loser psycho he's gonna kill me for sure scaredy face scaredy face <laughs> but everyone uh, everyone's heard that story from a relative right your grandfather told me i was the girl he was gonna marry <laughs> what we don't know is if grandpa said that to everybody right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's put in the bar oh. later. hey al did you tell her you was gonna get married Works <laughs> so, I wore like a relatively nice hoodie for you tonight and uh, <laughs> relatively nice, you know, but uh, guys, traditionally, we don't know how to dress, right? You ever see a guy with one of those novelty t-shirts with like jokes written all over it? it? Takes like 10 minutes to read the guy's shirt, right? I saw a guy, he had a shirt on with a list of reasons on it, why beer is better than women. <laughs> and then you look at the guy and you know he's only had beer <laughs> <laughs> and the reasons on the shirt are designed to make the guy think he's the boss of women right so it's always like, a beer never steals the remote control <laughs> you can have more than one beer <laughs> same guy <laughs> but the reason that's actually how we became the guy who decided to buy the shirt, right? Uh -huh. Beer never says it only likes you as a friend. Oh. 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 A beer never changes its phone number on you. <laughs> a judge never orders that you can't come within 500 feet of the house. <laughs> <laughs> my ears itch, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> it's weird, when you, when you scratch your ear on stage, it doesn't look so bad, but in a Zoom box, it doesn't, it doesn't come off well. <laughs> I got my phone here, this is the iPhone SE. And I'm keeping it nice. It's in good condition. But one time I shattered my phone. You ever shatter your phone? My recommendation is you go right out and you get it repaired that day, right? Because uh, deep down, we look at our friends with the shattered smartphones and we think their lives are a mess. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to say it. If you're walking around with a shattered smartphone, you're an alcoholic. <laughs> you go to any AMA meeting and it's wall to wall shattered smartphone. <laughs> you get pulled over, it shouldn't be a breathalyzer. It should be, let me see your phone right now. <laughs> what else is good? I can't do my Ramalama ding dong joke. Here's one. <laughs> do it. Do no, it. I can't because the punchline's rammed, lamma ding dong. I already ruined it. I'm dumb. <laughs> I uh, remember when you were kids. This is the time of year you spent with your family. Remember when you were kids and your dad would call you in the house for dinner? This is my dad calling me in the house for dinner. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right. I don't know what just happened. <laughs> Fun there. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> I said to Jason before I committed to this, if Beth and Steve aren't there, count me out. <laughs> <laughs> and I say that to everyone who books me, and they're almost never there, you know? <laughs> no green M&Ms in my dressing room, and you must have Beth and Steve on their couch. <laughs> he must have a bottle of water, and he must drink it. <laughs> but put it down. I, uh, yeah, this is in the moment. But uh, <laughs> remember when you were kids and your dad would call you in the house for dinner. This is my dad. Here's how it sounded. Probably similar in your lives. Here it is. <laughs> Mike, dinner now. <laughs> and mom would do it, and it would be completely different, right? Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Start expecting backup vocalists to come out of the house. There's going to be some broccoli tonight. <laughs> what else do I got to say here? Oh, yeah. So we're all on, we're on Zoom, obviously. And I'll tell you one thing social media. That's ruined birthdays. Remember when your birthday was amazing? You'd go out with everyone in person. There'd be cards and presents. The first thing that started to ruin birthdays was e-cards, right? You'd uh, you'd open your email and there'd be a chicken dancing, you know? And then you'd <laughs> run into your friend. Hey, did you get my e-card? Yeah, it gave me a computer virus. Thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so e-cards didn't stay popular because social media took over, right? Now on, on someone's birthday, we just cut... Uh, cut and paste, happy birthday. We put it on like 10 different Facebook walls. You barely look at whose birthday it is, right? Then all day on your actual birthday, you're just pulling out your phone and going like, 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 <laughs> like 700 <laughs> times, well, like, like. But worse than that is the next day when you have to read someone's post-birthday Oscar speech. Oh. <laughs> Thank you so much for the love and support. <laughs> <laughs> I'm overwhelmed by how many of you took time in your busy lives to show me how much you care about me because Facebook told you when my birthday was. <laughs> it's been going really good. Welcome back, buddy. I'm gonna have a ding dong. Yeah, you want to hear my, I'll tell you one I, got a joke. I also have a Ramalama ding dong joke, but I got some dip, dip, dips in mine also, you know? I thought that's how your mom's, you're not done yet, but I thought that's how your mom's calling you to dinner. I thought that's, she was going to end with Ramalama ding dong. That would be great. You know, I wrote a whole separate part. Ramalama ding dong. I got two, I got two more. Here we go. I don't know if any, yeah, everyone's got a friend who thinks they're really good at something, and when they, they brag about it, they go, "Hey, it's not my first rodeo." <laughs> Which means we better be very understanding if we're ever actually watching someone in their first rodeo. <laughs> I can't believe I'm on this bull. <laughs> it's my first rodeo. <laughs> <laughs> this is a, you know, you're supposed to close on your strongest joke, and this one isn't it, but I'm looking at <laughs> I don't know if you, there's weird expressions out there, right? Like, you ever see in a movie or a TV show when someone betrays someone or st stabs them in the back, the other person will go, Thanks a lot, Benedict Arnold. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you who don't know, Benedict Arnold was a traitor. 300 years ago <laughs> and he's still the example <laughs> you have to imagine that during his lifetime he probably thought it was gonna blow over right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah guys keep calling each other ben and Darnold, like it matters me. <laughs> anyway this was amazing thank you so much Jason. <laughs> Merry Christmas happy holidays all right <laughs> Michael Gelbart everybody Funny like stuff, it. man. Yeah, <laughs> normally I would not jump in on a comic during a set and say anything, but Michael embraces chaos like nobody else, man. I love it. <laughs> he loves it. So Bunny Miller says, nice set. Michael, very funny. Uh, Tony wants to know what's in your mug. Green tea. Yeah, green tea. Yeah. All right. Green tea. Thank you. Much. Gilled by, by green tea. Yeah, Tony has this networking... Um, 
Zoom that he's called What's in Your Cup. I think he was just trying to plug his show on you. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie Sagran said that they have sugar-free chocolate samples as well. I never said they didn't. Sure. Take, he never, take all the fun out of it, Jackie. It's like alcohol-free beer. <laughs> <laughs> and both Ann Romero and Rochelle Payne, they loved your joke about the Oscar speech. Said so true. There, it's all it's all in the comments section for you to to view there, Michael. Okay, are you guys ready for your final comedian? Yeah. Come on! All right, I hear John Schumacher back there. I haven't seen you. I can't look at the gallery while we're going because all the people in the attendee section are forced to look at whatever I'm looking at. One of those weird Zoom government rules. <laughs> okay, well, your final comedian is uh, super funny. I um, I didn't really meet her at the comedy store. I just kind of watched her from the back of the room like a creep. But I had already... <laughs> I had already seen her on Last Comic Standing. She's been on Comedy Central. She's super funny. Please welcome Deborah D. Giovanni. Hello, everyone. I am your final comedian of your life. You're all dead after this. That's it. Sorry. Comedy's over for you. Your final comedian. No pressure. No pressure. Just have to do the best job ever. I can't believe that we're all just going to sit here and pretend like we didn't just hear the name Bunny Miller. There's a woman named Bunny in the crowd. What do we do? What's your real name? Bunny. God, is it your, is it your real name? Is it, okay, was it really originally Rabbit, but you started, you know, as you as a kid? <laughs> born on Easter! Bunny was born on Easter. Listen to me. I'm in love with your parents. Where get me your parents immediately. That's fantastic. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. That's a weird name. Throw down. I want to see it. Um, uh, yeah, other doctor. Yeah, very good. Bunny, of course. I love it. Okay. Um, although, you know what? I do feel like if you're you, I think Bunny suits you because, like, I feel like you got to be kind of hot to have the name Bunny. Do you know what I mean? You can't show up all wrecked and be like, my name's Bunny. That doesn't work. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you're not Bunny. All right. Or maybe you are. Who knows? Anyway, no, Bunny, stop. You're a babe. Um, okay, let's say this. How are you so it's uh, Christmas. This is lovely. I've been doing uh, Zoom shows. Jason and I have been doing some. Uh, he's uh, let me on his Zoom shows in the last little bit, and that's lovely. I've been doing them since we started the pandemic. I immediately jumped on. I'm like, let's get this done. But I do feel strange because I know we had a couple people at the top of the show that were didn't know how to unmute or mute themselves. God bless, you know, because we're still learning, right? Like, even though we've all been doing this forever, it's still a little awkward. Like, I'm telling you, I still feel like, I always feel like I'm blurry. Doesn't my, I don't know what's wrong with me. Like I'm blurry. Simple Shepherd mode. Do you know what I mean? Do you remember Simple Shepherd? Do you know, speak, you know, unfocused. Uh, I, really look, yeah. I feel like I look like I'm making a hostage video. Doesn't look like I'm in the basement. <laughs> Very low production values, and I'm just like, send the money. Just send the money. <laughs> Nobody does. Am I gonna make it home? Nobody does. Um, uh, but and also, dude, this is it about the about the um about Zoom. I mean, my God, it's yes. Everyone makes the jokes about like, oh, we're not wearing pants. Of course, we're not wearing pants. But the main thing for me is, you know, stand up comedy, and now I do it all sitting down, which is I was gonna stand. <laughs> I was like, why would I break the seal? I haven't stood in two years. I literally <laughs> haven't stood. <laughs> I don't even know if my feet still work. Oh, uh, but the skin is just renewed baby flesh under there. Just. <laughs> and uh, I'll tell you this. I just had, um, are we all uh, boosted? I got my booster a couple weeks ago on the 10th of December. Yes, booster. I just got my booster. And of course, now we're going through that whole... You know, obviously we're having a resurgence of Omicron or whatever. It sounds like a robot now. Now COVID has taken on 3D life, hasn't it? It's like, oh, I don't know what's next. I'm terrified. I'm guessing it's like, what, uh, one of the um, uh, Megalodons? No, that's a, that's a dinosaur I was going to I'm trying to think. Oh, God. It's robots. They fly and then they turn into cars. You don't know what I'll tell you. But I am, of course, you know, so now we're still talking about anti-vax people, and it's very upsetting, you know, to all of us. I know for all the reasons, God bless, but I am obsessed with the folks that aren't getting um, vaccinated because they think we're going to be, uh, they're getting a microchip. 
Do you know any of those ones that are like, I don't, right. want, the, I don't want the government yeah. to know where I am all the time. I'm like, first of all, I don't know what I would love the government to know where I am. I have a very bad sense of direction. Let me tell you this. I don't know where I am myself. If I could just stand in the street and scream left or right, are you kidding me? It would have, ah, my own personal GPS? Please, look at me. I need it. Um, but I will tell you. One thing, now this might be, wow, well, this might be too much, but let's, we're grown ups. Let's go there. I am, I'm getting to be an older woman. I, I know I don't look it. I'm just, I'm just very insecure. And uh, <laughs> if I could bottle it and sell it, I'd be a rich woman. But I'll tell you this I am an, I'm an old goat, and uh, the change of life is going to be happening uh, for me very soon. And I don't know if you are, the men for sure are not aware of how upsetting uh, menopause is. It's just terrible. Menopause is, uh, they never tell you about it in gym class. It is very upsetting. A lot of terrible things happen. And it's very uneven, too. Do you know what I mean? Like, men, what do they do? Men just, you know, g just get older. Women, terrible stuff starts to happen to you. They're like, oh, yeah, you get acne. But you don't just get acne. You get just a beard of acne. Like, it's just on your jawline. So now I'm Amish with acne. I'm like, what's happening right now? It's not good. You have hot flashes. But you don't just have hot flashes. You sweat at night. You lie in your bed and you sweat. I'm telling you, I sleep in the tub. Now I sleep in the tub. <laughs> what mess over here? It's a, the only thing that's not wet on me, my vagina. Dry as a bone. I'll tell you this right now. <laughs> vagina, it, my vagina is so dry, I've nicknamed it Stephen Wright. Do you understand? <laughs> you know what I mean? He's got the... All right, that was too much. Was that too much? Listen, I don't know what we're doing. It's Christmas. Let's get crazy. Okay. Can you admit, though, men, nothing happens to men with as men get older. Some men get a little gray in their hair. Oh, no. Mm. Hope you can struggle through that. Do you know what I mean? Men get a little early sideburns. They just look distinguished. <laughs> Okay, I'm not saying I'm not saying that women get worse as they get older, but I am saying that men get better as they get older. Can we admit that? It's, I'm telling you. Okay, so I grew up. I was a teenager in the '80s, and I never once, I never once looked at John Stamos. Do you remember? Just I never looked at John Stamos and was like, oh, now. As an old, he just turned 60, and I would kill everyone I know to touch him. I swear to God. <laughs> and my entire family. Just sit next to John Stamos. Kevin Bacon? I could care less about Kevin Bacon. I was never footloose. I couldn't give a damn about Kevin Bacon. He's 70 years old, and I would bend him like a pretzel. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's <laughs> going be good for us. And I'll tell you this right now, too. This is not the, the menopause. The period is not leaving nicely as well. It's not at all just like, oh, it's, no. It's going out like a lion. I'm not gonna lie. I am telling you, my period is leaving like a drunk girl leaving a party she wasn't invited to. <laughs> 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 uh, I didn't want to be here. Grabbing stuff on the way out. You think she's done? She comes back in. I'm bad, bitches. Look, I know. The police at the hose. Because I'm warm. I'm very warm. But anyway, I'll tell you this. But I'll tell you that I am not, I am not a doctor. I have no science to back this up, but let's go with me on this one. I believe in my heart that fit people do not have taste buds. Can we be honest about this? <laughs> we don't. Why do they, well, I don't understand. How is it that fit people that are in, in shape people, they're like, they taste something, in, in my brain, it's awful. It tastes like dirt. They're like, it's delicious. How does that happen? <laughs> I was working out with a personal trainer, ugh, and she was crazy. And she said to me, an idea for me, for a uh, fun snack. That's what she said. Deborah, I've got a fun snack. And I was like, I can barely wait. Tell me about this. One snack. So she said to me, she's like, what you want to do is you want to get some no fat yogurt. And I'm like, it's already fun. It's already fun. Yeah. <laughs> What's next? She's like, and then you add some protein powder to it. It tastes just like pudding. I'm sorry. Have you had pudding before? What kind of messed up childhood did you have that you think that tastes like pudding? Are you? No wonder she's thin. She's empty inside. It is just, she's dead. There's nothing in there. Just hollow. That's why I not heard any of this. And she, okay, you know what? Someone also said this to me, that apparently cold water is not good for you. Have you heard about this? People, yeah. you're supposed to drink cold water. I don't know what you're talking about. Water is water. Like, let's just let's just get it in this. You know what I mean? I like because here's the thing. I like cold water, but I hate like tepid water. Do you mean like, like you give me a warm, like a medium warm glass of water? I'm like, what? Are you, 
Are you breaking up with me? What's going on? I hate it so much. <laughs> Cold water, ice water. Mmm, it's sexy. It's, de it's delicious. You give me tap water, just like tap and tap water. I'm like, what am I? Am I taking a pill right now? You know, <laughs> am I washing fruit? What am I doing? It's warm water. Do you understand? Yeah. I spend a lot of time by myself, everyone. These are the jokes. I'll tell you this. Speaking of <laughs> fruit, as I was. Speaking of fruit, okay. I am obsessed with... Um, did Jason do his apple jokes? I'm sorry. Did he? No. Oh, okay. Well, we both have apple jokes. This is two wines. You know, I um, I'm a little obsessed with the names of apples. First of all, I love an apple. Not gonna lie to you. But did you you know there's like seventy five thousand different kinds of apples. The yes. name who names apples? I want this job so bad. Okay. First of all, classic red delicious fruit. You know. Okay. Red. You got it. But you only got it half right. It is red. Have you ever had a good red delicious apple in your whole life? You haven't. You liars. I'm telling you, it's a bad apple. That's a mealy. It's a mealy. Someone gives you a red delicious. You're fired. This is, I, I might as well slap you in the face. Do you understand? Okay, what about a pink lady? Have you had a pink lady? Very nice apple. Who named the pink lady? Is she, what, is she a stripper? Is that the, is she what of the apple world? I don't, I don't know. Who named her the church and the pink lady? Okay, here's another one. Um, uh, what about a gala apple? Calm down, gala apple. You're not an event. You know what I'm saying? This is an apple. What do I gotta wear? A, I gotta wear a tuxedo? <laughs> to, <laughs> Okay, last one. This is last one of that. Um, what about a, a Fuji apple? You're not a camera. Get in my pie. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I literally could do 75 minutes of that, but I won't because I care about you. But here's something that I'll tell you. Um, and I know what you're thinking. This can't be. I have a boyfriend. I, I do. I have a real life boyfriend. And I don't eat a Granny Smith patty because what do I want? A, an unripe apple that makes me feel old? Get out of here, Granny Smith. <laughs> <laughs> patty. All right, so I have a boyfriend. Um, I do, and he is, uh, he lives in England, which I know makes him sound very fake. I know it does. boyfriend <laughs> in England. I do have a boyfriend, all right? But he is, he does, we're long distance, and it's very difficult um, for me. Not for him. It's good for him. I got to tell you, I'm good with an ocean between us. Do you know what I'm saying? That's how you date me. There's got to be miles. Do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> it's painful for him because then I can't show up at his house in the middle of the night, you know, <laughs> with a knife. Because I had something <laughs> I wasn't done talking. So that is it's true. And my he is uh, he's, lives in England, but he's Italian. And I'm Italian, but I'm only like half Italian. Do you know what I'm saying? I got eyebrows. That's all I got. But he is <laughs> Italian. He's full Italian. And he really, like, he's super Italian. Italian too. Like he, he likes to ride a bicycle. Um, he loves birds. Uh, he thinks hazelnut is sweet. What are you talking about? Very Italian. And you know what I mean? Actually, now that I'm saying that, I think I just described my father. Like I think, I think I just, oh my God, I'm dating my father. Anyway, dad's a good kisser. And I'll tell you this right now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'll tell you, I was going to go home for Christmas, uh, but then I remembered I'm not invited. So I didn't go. You know how it is. Now, I'll tell you, my family is, uh, I have a big Italian family. They are, they're not crazy about me. They don't love that I do comedy. I wonder why. They don't love that I do comedy. And here's the thing. I do have a big Italian family, but I also have a twin sister, and we're fraternal. We look, we look nothing alike, okay? And that was, it was tricky. Uh, she was the prom queen, and I was the spunky one with good coloring. Hey! <laughs> High school was fun. But I'll tell you, she was a good kid and now she's a good woman. You know, mom and dad always liked her better. She was just a good kid. You know what I mean? And now she's now we're both grown up and she's even better. She's like, um, uh, you know, uh, she's a mom. She's got three children. She's married. You know, she's thin. Uh, she loves Jesus. My sister loves Jesus. And don't get me wrong. I love Jesus too, but I love him, you know, uh, sexually. <laughs> this is hot. No lie Long hair and a beard. Oh, give him a skateboard. He's perfect. Are you kidding me? Jesus. Okay. That's probably why my parents don't like me that much. Because I make fun. You'll be here any minute, so that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Everyone, that's enough for me because I'm sweaty. So let's end it. Right. <laughs> to everyone, happy holidays. Be well. See you soon. Bye, 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 bye. All right. Deborah Giovanni, everybody. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> and, well,
Oh, that was great. That was great. So uh, you guys, I usually will read the comments at the end, but there were so many coming through, Deborah. I think you just beat the record, whatever that was.